Hey guys, so today I wanted to do the eyeshadow palette tag round two that was started by Samantha March and Ellie Glines. I believe it was in 2020 that they did round one and I also remember filming that. That feels like forever ago. I mean, it was like two years ago at this point, but they came out with a whole new set of questions. I think 11 questions all about different palettes in your collection, your favorite, an underrated one, so on and so forth, kind of like superlative awards for your palettes in a way. I just love a good tag. I love the community aspect of it. I've seen a couple of my favorites film this. I know I saw Ava 2's do it, um, Morgan Turner, several others, and of course Samantha March and Allie Glines are the ones that started it. So I'm going to link as many below as I can find as well of the creators of the tag. So be sure to check them out um, if you haven't watched their videos yet. But the first question is your all-time favorite palette. And I'm going to have to give this one to my ABH Norvina palette. There's another question for underrated. I feel like this could go under underrated as well, but um, I do have a different one for my underrated answer. When I really think about it, I think about all of my favorite palettes. This is the one that stands out to me as my all-time favorite. I really feel like I could use this palette every day and not get bored. It's also the palette that currently has the most pan. I have hit pan on four shades. You can't really see it, but I, do, I have hit pan on Dreamer. I feel like it's kind of hard to tell because it's already like a pearlescent sort of shade. And I'm really close to hitting pan on at least a couple of other shades. I even thought about doing a pan that palette with this palette this year, but I decided to do a pan those eyeshadows project instead. This one actually, one of the shades in here actually did end up getting rolled into my pan those eyeshadows though. I'm almost thinking about keeping this in the pan those eyeshadow series and just having, always having at least one shade from this palette in that project. I'm thinking about doing that because I love this palette so much. It also is one of my oldest palettes. I love that I can stay in my comfort zone with this palette if I want to with the like neutrals and the soft rosy tones. Those are my favorite kind of colors to wear on a day-to-day -day basis. But I can also do something a little bit different. There's like a periwinkle in here. There's some purples. It's just such a special palette to me. There's really a lot you can do with this. So this one would have to be my all-time favorite. So the next question is a new favorite and I have a couple of new favorites, but I'm gonna give this one to my BH Cosmetics Mimosa palette. I did hear the news that BH Cosmetics recently filed for bankruptcy. I'm so sad. I, I feel like they are also a very underrated brand in general, and I know I feel like they've kind of fallen off over the, over the last few years, even though I only just recently discovered them in 2021, and they make one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas. I really feel like they are a hidden gem at the drugstore price point. Now, I don't know a whole lot about like bankruptcy and the law behind all of that, but it doesn't mean that they're going out of business, at least not yet. <laughs> I really hope that they can pull through. I'm really hoping that they can stay afloat because I, I do love them. I'm gonna continue giving them as much love as possible in hopes that it'll help in some small way. But <laughs> this is the Mimosa palette. This is one of my newer palettes. I've actually had it for probably about six months, but it's relatively new in my collection. Out of all the new palettes, this is a major favorite. I'm so excited <laughs> for the spring because I'm gonna be using this so much. I just, I know it. I might even put this into my makeup basket for like Valentine's Day because there's a lot of pinks and reds in here that I think would be so cute for Valentine's Day, I just realized. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. Because I've been kind of waiting, holding off on really digging into this palette. I have used it a handful of times, but I haven't really given it a whole lot of use yet just because I bought it at like the very end of summer, right when I was starting to do a lot of fall looks. And then we got into winter, so I was doing holiday looks and I just haven't really gotten around to using this as much as I would like to, but I'm so excited. I've been like patiently waiting for spring because this is gonna be, I'm gonna be using it a lot. <laughs> I just know it. So yeah, super cute palette quality of BH Cosmetics, at least of their 16 pan palettes like this, I have three of them in my collection, they're all phenomenal. Um, you might have noticed I did try fake freckles again today. <laughs> I, I don't know what has happened to me, but I am fully on board with the faux freckles. I know I'm only about two years late to the trend, but I, I love the look. I definitely have not mastered the technique yet, but I would say this time is better than my first time. On Saturday, I did a video trying a bunch of makeup techniques that I never do, and a lot of those techniques I probably wouldn't try again, but I'm kind of on a mission now to master fake freckles because I think 
I think they're actually really cute. So the third question is a palette that you keep for the memories. I'm not a hugely sentimental person. I don't really have a lot of trouble getting rid of things even if I have memories attached to them. Um, but I would say one that I do keep, I, I do see myself having a hard time ever getting rid of is probably my ABH Subculture palette. This is another one of my oldest palettes. I bought this all the way back in 2018, I think, which was four years ago now. I can't believe that. I bought it a little bit after all of the, the drama, the controversy kind of settled down. I was able to get it on sale and I was just really excited to try it because I already had Modern Renaissance and I think at that time I already had Soft Glam as well and I just wanted to pick up another ABH palette and I was really drawn to this color story. It was very unique, unlike anything else I owned at the time. And yeah, this palette has been with me through a lot, through many moves and um, many phases of my makeup journey and my journey here on YouTube. I'm sure one day I will ha have to part ways with this palette, but I do feel like I'll probably have a hard time letting go of it because it's just, it's one of those kind of iconic palettes in the beauty community, even though it was so controversial. But yeah, I feel like there are a lot of memories for me attached to this palette. So that's, I think that's part of the reason why I do keep it, even though I don't use it super often. It is, it's just a fun one to have. All right, the next one is an underrated palette. And this one, I have been singing the praises of this one for probably going on three years now. I still think it's criminally underrated. It's such a good palette. This is the e.l.f. Cosmetics Earth and Ocean palette. I mean, look at this color story. I feel like this color story is still so unique, even though it's been out for a while. You just don't see a color story like this every day. And on top of that, the quality of this palette to me stands out above a lot of other drugstore eyeshadows I've tried and even other e.l.f. eyeshadows I've tried. This is, I think, some of the best quality eyeshadows they've put out ever that I've that I've personally tried. So I feel like I haven't been reaching into this palette as much lately, probably just because I have been playing with newer things, but this is another one that maybe in the spring I'll roll this into my makeup basket. I've got a lot of things I need to roll into my makeup basket, but um, I do love wearing especially green and yellow eyeshadow in the springtime, so I, yeah, I love this one. Very underrated. I think it still stands out to me even after having it for like three years and I still recommend it. All right, the next question is a palette that's not a favorite, but you can't get rid of it. And for me, this one is gonna have to be the Clarity Cosmetics So Mermazing palette. This one I bought last year right when it launched. I did a three looks, one palette with it if you'd like to see that. And in that video, I did kind of share that I was a little disappointed by it, especially the mattes. Unfortunately, the mattes in here are not my favorite. I do find them a little bit chalky and dry, and I think I would have probably liked for them to be just a little bit less pastel. I know it's meant to be a pastel palette, but especially like the yellow, peach, and pink, those are all very, very desaturated, and I do find them a little bit tricky to work with for that reason. But the main reason I can't let go of this palette is the shimmers. I mean, these shimmers are ridiculous. I could stare at them all day. The Clarity Shimmer Formula is kind of like a flaky, chunky formula, so it's one of those that you really just tap your finger in and slowly build, but wow, these are so beautiful. All five of those duochromes, I feel like the shimmers alone in here make this palette worth the price. I think this was $48, so not a cheap palette by any means. And it's a shame because I do normally love Clarity's formula. I have several of their singles in both matte and shimmer finishes, but the mattes in here, I think probably just because they are so, so pastel, I find them a little bit tricky. But even though the mattes aren't my favorite, I just, I cannot, cannot get rid of this palette. The next question is actually one that I don't think I have an answer to, and that is your favorite collab palette. I don't think, I looked through all my palettes, and I don't think any of my palettes are collabs. Unless there's one that I didn't realize was a collab, <laughs> I don't think I have any, so I'm gonna have to leave this one blank. But let me know, do you have any uh, collab palettes that you think I should try, whether it's with an influencer or with a celebrity, anything like that? Let me know. Am I missing out? <laughs> the next question is your 2021 favorite. And I did film a video back in December ranking all the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in 2021. And my favorite ended up being the BH Cosmetics Summer in Saint-Tropez palette. Another BH Cosmetics shout out here. This was the first BH eyeshadow palette that I purchased and I quickly fell in love. I used this so much last year. Um, I think it will continue to be a favorite this year as well. The shimmers in here are so like smooth and creamy. The mattes are very easy to work with. I even hit pan on one of the shades within a matter of months of owning it. 
Um, I do think part of that is because they are kind of shallow pants, but still, I mean, I still think that's pretty impressive. <laughs> um, and I mean, just look at the variety in here. It's got such a fun mix of more muted shades, more colorful shades, some pastels, some bright colors. Even though it's kind of a little bit of everything in here, it doesn't overwhelm me like some palettes under that description would. You know, sometimes I feel like when palettes have too many different colors all together, I find it too overwhelming, but I still find this very cohesive, very intuitive. I I never, never have a problem figuring out what to do with this palette, so still love it, still recommend. I hope you can still get your hands on this. I'm guessing they're probably gonna like downsize their line. I hope they keep this one. I feel like this is one of their best. The next question is a palette that you didn't expect to love. And my answer for that is gonna be the Estate Cosmetics Mystic Forest palette. Estate is another very kind of under the radar brand. This I received in PR last year and when I first opened this up, I wasn't expecting to love it. In fact, I almost thought about not even keeping it because I kind of thought maybe it leaned a little bit too brown and too deep. They didn't really look like shades that I would use very often, but I'm glad I decided to give it a try because funnily enough, I ended up loving it. I don't normally wear shades like this, like mustardy shades, browns, um, olive tones. That's not normally my thing, but there's something about this palette that I just enjoy wearing and I love these two shimmers right here Mystic Forest and Fairy Dust both they have the texture of a super shock shadow and Fairy Dust especially but I'll go ahead and swatch both they they're very creamy to the touch and just so rich and smooth and foiled and those two shades in this palette really won me over but I love the mattes in here too. They're very um, blendable, very pigmented, just a really great fall palette especially. And I also think the packaging is super cute. So I didn't expect to love this, but it really took me by surprise. The next question is a palette that sparks joy. And this was a hard one to answer because I feel like most of my palettes do spark joy. I try not to keep anything that doesn't spark joy in my collection, but the one that I feel like when I look at it, it just instantly lifts me up would have to be the Urban Decay Stone Vibes palette. I know I talk about it all the time, but I mean, it's so beautiful to look at, first of all, I mean, even the packaging, but the shades inside are also stunning. I love the textured shimmers in here. I just think they're so fun. They're really different from anything else that I have, and it was hard to decide whether to put this as my all-time fave or Norvina. Honestly, these two are so close, but they're both in my top, like, top three for sure. I, I love them both. But this one really does spark joy. Love it. The next question is the newest palette in your collection, and my newest palette is the Aether Beauty Desert Sunset palette. Um, this is also Aether Beauty's newest launch. I love Aether. They're one of my favorite brands. I did a Five Looks One palette with this and kind of a review if you want to see that. It does look oddly similar to ABH Subculture, especially with that coral shade, but in that video I compared the two and I actually do feel like, even though there are some definite overlapping shades between the two, this palette leans a lot warmer and a lot of the looks that I got with this palette I never would have gotten with Sultry. But yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with this. I really do love Aether Beauty's eyeshadow formula, so that's my newest one. Such a cute little palette. So the final question of the eyeshadow palette tag is the first palette that you used in 2022. And at first I was like, wait, I don't remember. But then I went back and looked at the first video that I filmed in 2022, which I'm pretty positive I filmed on New Year's Day. So it would be the first look I did in 2022. And that was actually the day that I filmed my Pan Those Eyeshadows intro video. So there wasn't just one palette that I used that day, there were actually four. Because in that video I selected my Pan Those Eyeshadow shades and then I created a look with all of them. And there were four palettes plus one single shadow that I used. And the palettes I used for that look were Norvina, Naked Wild West, my Shared Planet Polar Bear palette, and the Profusion Mauve palette. If you wanna see that, I will link it below. I've been having a lot of fun with my Pandos eyeshadows so far. It's only my first month, but it's definitely been a challenge. I am hoping to have at least one shade that I hit pan on before my February update, so stay tuned. But that is the eyeshadow palette tag round two. I hope you guys enjoyed getting a little peek into my eyeshadow palette collection. I did film an eyeshadow palette collection video a few months ago if you want to check that out as well. Again, I will leave the creators of this tag, Samantha and Allie, linked down below. Be sure to check out their videos as well. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you've not already. And otherwise, I hope to see you again very soon in my next video. Bye.